Well, you need to understand that he knows and he understands what you're dealing with. You may not think so, but I'm here to tell you so. Blake, think about it. God understands everything you're going through. God understands that you need a right now breakthrough. God understands when your friends forsake you. God understands when your family misunderstands you. He knows and he cares when you're down and in despair. Don't you worry, child. God understands. I tell you, he knows and he cares. Don't you worry, no. He answers prayers. He understands. God understands when you feel like giving up. When you're sad because you don't feel love, God understands why you cry, the very tears that you cry, God understands the times you'd rather not live, but dies that he knows, and he cares when you die in despair. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Blessings and favor. Everybody share and invite and tag for me. Everybody share, invite and tag for me. Good morning. All my wisdom warriors. Good morning. Good Monday morning to all of you. All the tears you try to hide. God understands the depression that brings you down. Yes, he does. God understands the hurt that turns your smiles to frown. Ken of Louisiana, Big Al, I see you. Yes, he does. Phoenix, Arizona, I see you. Good morning. San Diego, I see you. Good morning. How well you know. He understands. Brooklyn, New York is in the room. Jacqueline. Good morning. Maricopa, Arizona. Roger Duncan. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Roger. Albany, Georgia. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Winston-Salem, Apple Valley, California, Moreno Valley, California, Lawrenceville, Georgia, Rosie at Criminal District Court, New Orleans, New Orleans East, good morning, Burlington, North Carolina, good morning, Cincinnati, Ohio, good morning, Seattle, Washington, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. The Phelan, California. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Listen, I'm only going to be a few minutes this morning because I am tired. I'm tired, and uh, I need to. I need to rest myself. Didn't have the most restful night last night. Um, not going back to sleep, but I do need to relax and and allow my body to recover and regroup. Uh, but I wanted to start this week off right. Davenport, Iowa, good morning. I want to talk to you all uh, this week about uh, generational curses. And uh, I know we talk quite often about that. We're going to talk about them until they're broken. 
We're going to talk about them until they're broken. And the reason we're talking about them so much, Gonzalez, Louisiana, thank you so much. Delhi, Louisiana, Kansas City, Missouri, thank you so much. Is because curses thrive in darkness. Uh, they thrive in areas where no light is shined upon them. Um, they thrive when they are unaddressed and unattended to. And many times... Uh, the biggest problem within families and within people who perpetuate curses is simply this. Uh, it is their unawareness and their lack of recognition uh, as it relates to them being under or involved in a generational curse. And somebody said, what is a generational curse? It is exactly what it sounds like. It is a curse that goes down through the lineages of, the, of your family. It goes down through the family line. It goes down through the lineages of the family. So every generation, somebody in, in every generation brings this same mindset. Somebody in this generation, in the next generation, brings the same mindset. Somebody in the next generation brings the same mindset. And we keep going and going and going and going and going until we are totally consumed as a family by a curse. And it can come in all kinds of different forms. Uh, the curse can be poverty, a poverty mindset that is on that family that keeps every member of that family struggling, right? My father was, was the curse breaker for his family. My father was the curse breaker for his family. I'm going to say it again. My father was the curse breaker for his family. My mother, in many instances, in many aspects, broke the curse for her family, right? And uh, it has to be broken. And it, if it had not been broken on my mother and my father, those curses would have fallen down to me. They would have fallen down to my brother R.C. Um so there must be an acknowledgement and an awareness that that we are dealing with a curse. Why? Because of what Hosea says in chapter 4, verse number 6. Hosea says, we're not destroyed because the devil is behind us. Shalina Whitmore, thank you so much for your stars. We're not destroyed because the devil is behind us. We're destroyed because we lack knowledge. We're destroyed because we live in ignorance and one of the things ignorance does is ignorance keeps us under tribute and keeps us under the thumb of whatever that curse is that is holding us hostage. Think about even in slavery times, what was, what was the, the main uh, thing that they did not want a slave to be able to do? They didn't want to be able to read, they didn't want to be able to write. Why? If I keep you ignorant, I can keep you suppressed. So if I keep you ignorant of the curse, I keep you living under the curse. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Are you all here? That's why, and I'm only going to be a few minutes today, today, literally. We'll get into it more tomorrow. That's why um, it is so important. And please hear this, people, if you don't hear anything else I say. It is so vitally important for you and I to have relationship with Holy Spirit. It's important for you and I to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. It is important for you and I to have a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. It is important. It is essential. It is extremely necessary. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is not optional. It's necessity. Why? Because the job of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into all truth. And uh, the first truth he tells us is the truth about us, the truth about what is in us. One portion of scripture says, show the house to the house. Or in other words, God shows us ourselves because you can't correct in you what you have not identified in you. The job of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to say it again, is to pull the cover off of those curses and those things in us that are covered up, those sins, those, and sins are often the conduit to curses. 
Uh, these are how curses, sin is how curses many times get into our lives is because of someone who sinned way back in the lineages of your family, right? And they opened the door for that curse. They opened the door for that curse in your family. They brought that spirit into your family. And then what happened was, Lynn Cobb, thank you so much, that spirit was transferred down the, the line of your family. Are you here? So it was transferred to your great, great, great grandmother, and then she transferred it to your great, great grandmother, and then she transferred it to your great grandmother and grandfather and, and you know, your, your, your great aunt, and then it just passes down. Ariel, thank you so much. But many times it, it passes, it is passed through a family without the awareness of that family. We just think that's just how we are. No, that's how you have been, how you have become as a result of um, a curse that has gone undetected within the confines of your family. Am I talking to you in this room? And, you know, you, you can run around all you want to about, well, you know, that don't apply to me. But look at your life and see whether or not you carry that curse. See whether or not your actions uh, denote that there is a curse on you. Davin Clint Smith Sr., thank you, sir. Uh, the first step to overcoming generational curses is to become aware of their existence. Aware of their existence. It's like a termite in your house. Termites work behind the walls. And then there's some evidence, there are little, little dirt holes that start developing on the surface of your, your sheetrock that let you know that there's something behind that wall. And there are a lot of things that's happening in your life, and you need to know there's something behind it. I'm talking to somebody in this room. There are a lot of things about you and you know, mindsets you carry and attitudes you you will jump quick into. Are you here? And you can't keep overlooking it. Kim Clark Brown, thank you so much. At some point, you got to say, like, like I would say if I saw a dirt pile on that wall, I would say there's something behind it. What's behind it? Many times it's a curse. And it's a generational curse which means it is a strong curse that has been on your family. Catherine R. Brown, thank you so much for your stars, that has been on your family for generations. Mark George, thank you so much for your stars. So the first step to overcoming generational curses is to become aware of their existence and recognize uh, how they may be, may be affecting your mind, your spirit, your body, and ultimately your life. Generational curses can affect your mind, your body, and your spirit, and ultimately your life. Uh, the mission of Satan is to rob, to steal, to kill, and ultimately to destroy your life so that your life is, not, is no longer, should I say, a conduit through which God gets glory. Are you here? When you and I pick up these curses and we perpetuate them, Literally what happens is our lives are, are no longer being used for the glory of God, but rather for the furthering of the agenda of the enemy. So by gaining knowledge and understanding, you can begin the process, you can begin the process of breaking free uh, from these thought patterns, these physical patterns, these spiritual patterns, and, and you will alter the course of your life, ultimately. Are you here? So I have to, I have to break a curse. A curse is not just going to leave. It's not something you can ask out. It's something you got to cast out. And you can only cast it out. You can only cast it out by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of y'all are scared of the Holy Spirit. You don't, you really you really run from an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You don't mind joining me for prayer in the morning, but you don't you you've not given an open invitation to the Holy Spirit to come into your life and begin to rule your life and begin to govern your life. Are you here? Mark says, I've been telling my siblings about this. 
They don't believe because uh, they don't look deep. And you got to look deep. You got to be spiritual minded. The Bible says, listen to this, Mark. The Bible says that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. So this is what has to happen. I have to break it off of my family for my family. I have to break it, first of all, off of my life and off of the lives of my children so that my children don't perpetuate and bring this thing into their future. Sparkle Stevenson, thank you so much for your stars today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Help me here. So how do I break it? First key to breaking it, write this down, is I got I to gotta repent and confess. I got to repent and confess. What am I confessing? Somebody what am I conf- what says what am I confessing? I'm confessing any part I played in the furtherance of this generational curse. What am I repenting for? I'm repenting for any part I played in the furtherance of this generational curse. First John 1 and 19 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Or in other words, uh, when he cleanses us from all unrighteousness, uh, part of the unrighteousness he cleanses us from is the tribute we are under as it relates to that curse. He reverses the curse on our lives. He reverses the curse and nullifies that curse's power on your life. And how does he do it? He does it through repentance and confession. I keep, you you notice every week at some point we're talking about repentance and confession because it's so important. Because a lot of y'all think that you're going to get what you want from God like you are. And it's not going to happen that way. You can't, you can't get God's favor on your terms. You're going to have to repent. I'm going to have to repent. And I'm going to have to confess. I'm going to have to acknowledge my part. David didn't get delivered until he repented and confessed. He says, Lord, yes, I did this thing. And against thee and thee only have I done this thing. He says, now this is what I need you to do. I need you to blot out my transgression. I need you to deliver me. I need you to set me free. I need you to deliver me. I need you to set me free. (laughs) Are y'all here? And one of the mistakes we make is we see the curse on everybody else because it's more obvious on them and it's less obvious on us. So we overlook get this, the moat in our eye, and we see the log in their eye. We overlook the the little things that that curse produces in us while we look at the major things that that curse produces in them, Tammy Jim Franklin so much. So we say, we ain't got it, but they have it. She got that curse on her. But, but if you look closely and honestly at yourself, many times you recognize that hints of that curse it's on you too. And you can't change what you want to acknowledge about yourself. You got to repent and you got to confess. Acknowledging any personal involvement or participation in generational curses is absolutely important to your deliverance because you will never get delivered while in denial. I'm going to say that again. You will never get delivered while you are living in denial. Denial ain't just a a river in Egypt. (laughs) That's the now. I'm talking about denial. And a lot of you live in that place of denial. And I can see it on her and I can see it on him and I can see it on them. But if you look deeper and you look closer at yourself, many times you see little hints of it on yourself. If you haven't already broken it off of you. Are you here? You see, you start seeing some of the things that were in your father on you. You start seeing some of the things that were in your grandmother or your grandfather on you. Some of the things you 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 despised about them, you start seeing them in you. What is that? It's a hint of that curse. And if you don't deal with those small things, they will become major things. The Bible says it's the small fox that spoils the whole vine. It's the small fox that spoils the whole vine. 
I'm going to say it again. It's the small fox that spoils the whole vine. And this is the problem. Most of us won't be open and we won't be honest. We refuse to be open. We refuse to be honest. So we can't be delivered. Mm. I'm preaching to somebody right now, acknowledging any personal involvement or participation in general cur- generational curses and repenting from them is essential. Confessing your sins, confessing your sins to God and seeking his forgiveness brings cleansing and restoration. It brings cleansing and restoration. Dewana Beeman, thank you so much. It brings cleansing, and that's what we need. We need cleansing, and we need restoration. We need cleansing, and we need restoration. Third thing that has to happen. I have to renounce. I have to renounce. Uh, the curse off of my life. I have to renounce it from my life. I have to renounce it. And that means I need to make a verbal proclamation. I can't just say on the inside, well, I ain't doing that no more. No, I need to, I need to speak it on the outside that this thing will no longer have this effect on me. Miss J. Triplett, thank you so much. I appreciate you for your uh, for your, your super chat. Are you here? I have to renounce it. I got to renounce it. Are you here? I have to, I, I have to renounce it. Galatians 3 and 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. And how did he do it? By becoming a curse for us. So through faith in Jesus Christ and the finished works of Jesus on the cross, we have the power to renounce and break generational curses. I need somebody in this room to declare right now, I renounce and break every generational curse off of my life. I renounce and I break by the power of the Holy Spirit, every generational curse off of my life. It is important to declare and believe in the redemptive work of Christ. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Moni Smith, thank you so much. Moni Smith, thank you so much. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. And that includes and and encompasses the curses that have been on my family. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am no longer under tribute to that curse. I no longer have to live according to the dictates of that curse. That curse is no longer in effect in my life, nor in the lives of my children, because when God makes a covenant with me, he does not just make it with me. He makes it with mine. My children will not live under a curse. My family will not live under a curse. Notice what the writer says, what the what scripture says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's a covenant anointing, not just with me, but with everything under my roof. Everything. I'm talking to somebody in this room. Every, every, every part of my bloodline, I'm claiming deliverance for. I renounce every generational curse. Are you here? However big or small they are, I renounce them. However obvious, huh, they are, are you here? However obvious they are or or, uh, however conspicuous they are, I renounce them. That thing will not live in me. This is my season, Deverney. Thank you so much for your star. Are you here? I got to renounce generational curses because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. What does that mean when it says he became a curse for us? He took every sin. 
He took every malady and every weakness of our flesh. He took it to the cross. He took your sins and mine. He became a curse for us. I told you the curse comes in by sin. He took that curse to the cross with him and it was nailed to the cross with him, which gives me the power to overcome it and renounce it and not allow that thing to control my existence any longer. I'm talking to somebody in this room. It is important to declare and believe, declare and believe, declare and believe in the redemptive work of Christ who has already overcome every curse. He has already overcome every curse. And that's why you and I in scripture are labeled overcomers because we have the right to participate in the finished works of Jesus on the cross. He has overcome the curse. Therefore I am an overcomer because I am in him. The, that's why the Bible says we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. The Marlo McElroy. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Whatever that curse is on your life, Jesus made sure you got blood for that. Glory. I, I need y'all to declare that. Whatever the curse is, say, I got blood for that. I got blood for that. I got blood for that. I have blood for that. I've got blood for that. Glory to God. I've got blood for that. I am a child of God. I am a royal priesthood. I am a chosen generation. I am a part of the royal family. And I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Next thing I got to do, and I'm done. I'm done for the day, right? Is I got to seek deliverance and inner healing. We talked about this. We kind of talked about this emotional healing. Well, we didn't kind of talk about it. We talked about it for the last two weeks. I got to seek deliverance and inner healing. You're going to hear a lot of emotional healing stuff in within the confines of these teachings because it's so important and it plays such a big role in generational curses. A lot of people who are in emotional despair, that's a, that it's a curse that's been passed down. Are you here? Sandra Smith, thank you so much for your stars. A lot of times, you know, the, the emotional state you find yourself in is is the same state your mother found herself in. It's it's generational. Um, well, people in my family just suffer from depression. Well, people in your family suffer from a generational curse. That's all you're saying, Danielle Jones. Thank you so much. We just suffer from depression. We, you know, my mama suffered from it. My my grandmama suffered from it. My grandfather suffered from it. My granddaddy suffered from it. My daddy suffered from it. And now I'm suffering from it. It's a generational curse. And you got to identify that, that you got to stop making everything natural and understand that most of the natural stuff you see comes from the spirit, spiritual stuff you don't see. First spirit, then natural. Are you here? So I got to begin to seek deliverance and inner healing. Psalm 34 and 17 says this, the righteous cry out. And the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from all of their troubles. Seeking deliverance and inner healing through prayer, counseling and support uh, from trusted spiritual leaders and, and spiritual people that God has assigned to your life. Joseph G. Edwards, thank you, Big Joe. I appreciate you, sir. Listen, by... by, by uh, connecting and and getting the support of trusted spiritual leaders uh it can lead us into the process of removing the effects of generational curses from our lives the lord is faithful to hear our cries and not only is he faithful to hear our cries he is faithful to deliver us from our despair i gotta seek deliverance I have to seek deliverance. I got to seek deliverance. And, and what does it mean to seek deliverance? I got to seek God, the deliverer, because you'll never get deliverance if you don't have the deliverer. Sparkle Stevenson, thank you so much. Y'all, I don't know how you, how you all think you're going to get delivered and you don't want nothing to do with God. 
I mean, you just want a little casual acquaintance with God. Bishop, tell me something nice in the morning, and I ain't going to have no encounter with God until the next morning. Tell me something nice again this morning, Bishop, and I ain't going to pray again until I pray with you the next morning. You're, ne you're never going to be delivered like that, man. You're never going to be set free like that. You have to develop an appetite for God. Barbara Caldwell, thank you so much. You have to develop an appetite for God. You have to develop an appetite for God. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. Who are they crying to? The Lord. The Lord. Who are they crying to? They're crying to the Lord. Who are they seeking? The Lord, the deliverer, the healer, the restorer. The righteous cry out to the Lord and the Lord hears them. And then he delivers them from all of their generational stuff, all of their curses, all of their weaknesses, all of their struggles, all of their issues. The Lord delivers them from them all. Can I tell you all something today as I get ready to go? I don't care what you're suffering from, God can heal it. I don't care what your generational curse is. Sabrina Black and Gold in my soul, thank you so much for your start. I don't care what your issue is, God can heal it. God will, God will not heal what you fail to reveal. Now, it's not that God doesn't know it, but he needs your acknowledgement of it in order to deliver you from it. David get, didn't get delivered again until he acknowledged it. My father got delivered from alcoholism, but it wasn't until he laid in the hospital room. I, I wish I had. I'm going to go through his, his CDs and, and, and DVDs again, see if I can find him telling his testimony. He says it wasn't until he laid on a hospital bed and he acknowledged to the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm... This alcoholism, I'm fighting it. This thing is my struggle. David Bamberg, thank you so much, for, sir, for your stars. And then he testifies that early one morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, while in that same hospital room, he had just confessed the night before, you know, the need for deliverance. And early that morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, he says it was like God kicked the door of the hospital room open and a light shined on him and he heard God say, I've come to deliver you. And from that moment, God wiped the taste from his mouth and he never consumed again. But it didn't happen until he acknowledged it. As long as you're sitting around here acting like you won't acknowledge it and, and allowing your pride to keep you from your deliverance, you ain't going to never experience real deliverance. Jesus makes that woman at the well face her issues. He says, woman, where's your husband? She says, I've had five, and the one I got ain't. ain't. She says, she says uh, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, well, you told the truth, but tell the whole truth if you really want deliverance. She said, I've, I've had five, and the one I got now belongs to somebody else. Jesus said, now you're ready for this living water. Because deliverance from that curse is not going to happen until there's an acknowledgement of that curse from the carrier of that curse. Are you here? It wasn't until I was able to admit that I was angry, an angry person, always ready to fight, that the Lord delivered me from, from that fighting, angry, brawling spirit. I'm talking to somebody in this room. It wasn't until. And you ain't going to get delivered. You're not going to be delivered until there is an acknowledgement by you to God concerning the curse you carry. The curse you carry. And somebody said, well, you know, uh, what I'm dealing with is not a generational thing because I've never seen it in my family. Well, beware because you might be the one establishing a generational thing in your family. And if you don't break it off of you, you might be the one, you might be the initiator of the curse. Lord Stovall, thank you so much. 
You're already seeing hints of your, your daughter acting like you. You're already seeing hints of your son beginning to portray some of your character traits. And if you don't break it off of you, you will be the establisher and initiator. You will be uh, the door by which the enemy has brought this curse into your family. So if you're not seeing it on your family and you're seeing it on you, you need to get it off of you uh, because, because you don't want that thing transferred down to your children. Every curse, every generational curse starts with someone. Someone was the bridge that brought it over. Someone was the door that was left open. Someone ushered that thing into the family. So I got to, I got to seek deliverance and I got to seek healing. I got to seek deliverance and I got to seek healing. All right. Am I talking to anybody in this room? Yeah. A gluttony is a, is a spirit that you got to break, man. It's gluttony and this overeating and overindulging in anything overindulging in anything is a spirit that needs to be broken because the Bible teaches you and I moderation in all things. Are you here? So, so we got to break it. Father, I thank you for your people today. And I thank you for a clear concise word that you're giving to your people today, that you've given to your people today, should I say. I thank you, Father, that this word is taking root in their hearts. This word ain't just roaming around in their heads. I thank you that this word is taking root in their hearts and that conviction is taking place from me to everyone that hears me. I thank you that conviction is taking place. I thank you that conviction takes place before conversion takes place. I thank you, Father, for divine deliverance. I thank you for divine healing. I thank you for divine breakthrough. I thank you, Father, for realigning our hearts with you. Those hearts that have been wayward and those hearts that have been all over the place, those spirits that have been all over the place. I thank you, Father, that there's a realignment of our hearts with you. I thank you, Father, that we're coming back to the altar. And as we come back to the altar, you're going to make alterations on our lives. And we will no longer be what we've been and no longer think like we've thought. I thank you that every generational mindset and curse every generational sin that has attached itself to us is broken now by your spirit. Every chain that the enemy has used to control us and pull us in his direction is trampled under the feet of your children today. I thank you, Father, that wisdom, wisdom, is falling on the lives of your people. Wisdom, wisdom. I thank you, Father, that wisdom is falling on the lives of your people and that when we leave this room today, we will not be walking in a curse, but be walking in favor and following your precepts and principles. Now, God, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the broken experience healing and deliverance. I thank you, Father, that there will be no shadow of turning in us. We will stand fast in the liberty wherewith you have made us free. We will stand fast in the liberty wherewith you have made us free. We will not return to old mess and old junk and old foolishness. We will not be consumed again by family curses. Thank you, Father, that we are anointed to be curse breakers, not curse makers. We are breaking curses off of our family. Thank you, Father, that our children, our nieces and nephews and our, our, our younger cousins will not 
perpetuate this curse or these curses that have been on our family line. I thank you, Father, that there's going to be new levels of success in our family. There are going to be new levels of righteousness in our family. I thank you, Father, that there's going to be new that there's going to be new temperaments in our families and there's going to be new mindsets in our families. I thank you now, Father, that we are anointed by you to be curse breakers and not curse makers. And Father, we will forever give you glory. We will forever give you honor. And yes, we will forever give you I praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Elder Cassandra Peters, thank you so much. Victorious Valorano, thank you so much. Sparkles, thank you so much. Sandra Smith, thank you so much. Katri Gibbs, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Chantel Allen, thank you so much. Sandra Smith, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. Uh, thank you, Brother Cedric Morissette. And thank you, mobile moms. Thank you so much. Y'all receive this today? I love you all. And I'm grateful for you spending these few moments with me today. All right. Um, I had to get on today. And you know what? Talking to y'all, I feel better. But I'm still going to get me some rest. I feel strengthened. I feel energized. That's what the Holy Spirit does, man. He restores my soul. Glory to God. He restores my soul. But I'm still going to get me some rest today. I'm going to get me some rest today. Yesterday was absolutely phenomenal, man. Baton Rouge was amazing at 8 o'clock. Uh, they tell me 8 o'clock New Orleans was amazing. 10.30 New Orleans was amazing. My brother tells me that 11 o'clock uh, Houston was amazing. Bishop Roberson told me that Jackson, Mississippi was amazing. Uh, Pastor McKay had an amazing time in Hammond, and Bishop Bolden had an amazing time uh, at our east location. Uh, God's just doing amazing things. He's that kind of God. He's an amazing God. He is an amazing God. I love you all so very, very much. Hope you receive this today. Did you receive this today? In Jesus' name, did you receive it? Catrice Johnson said, I receive it. I receive it. Amen. You got to receive it, y'all. Sparkle Stevenson, thank you so much. You got to receive it, y'all. You got to receive it. You got to receive it because God is up to something great, something big. God's getting ready to do something that's going to blow your mind. Now, this has been my request of, and I forgot to announce it at our New Orleans campus, but every every person who will do this with me particularly those of you who are part of New Home Ministries, I want you to do this with me. The Lord spoke to me and said to me that he wanted us to every morning. Now, this is sacrifice, but sacrifice brings blessings. It brings favor. It brings power. Every morning at 6 a.m., 6 a.m., I want you to spend just a moment with God. Doesn't have to be long, right? But every morning this week at 6 a.m., I want you to spend a moment with God. I forgot to announce it at our New Orleans campus yesterday. I did announce it to our Baton Rouge family. Every morning, set your clock. I know you say, well, I'm not an early riser. Well, God is speaking especially to you because it's going to be a great sacrifice for you. You want God to sacrifice for you, but you don't want to make any sacrifices for him. God told me that this week was a time for sacrificial prayer. Every morning, 6 a.m., 6 a.m., 6 a.m., I want you to set your alarm. Now, you can go back to bed if you want afterwards, right? But I want you to spend a few moments with God if it ain't no more than five minutes. God promised me that miracles, signs, and wonders were going to happen this week. Did y'all hear what I just said? God promised me that miracles, signs, and wonders would happen this week. This week. God promised me that miracles, signs, and wonders would happen this week as a result of us spending those moments in prayer. I hope you all hear me, and I hope you receive it, all right? 
new home, I really want you all on board because there's some things God showed me that's going to happen in our church that's going to be predicated on our sacrifice. And new home is not just local anymore. We have members of our family all over the nation, literally now, uh, through our virtual sanctuary. And um, I want you to be a part of this thing that God has spoken to me. God's going to do st stuff for us individually, and God's going to do something for us collectively that's going to literally blow your mind. It's going to literally blow your mind. I sincerely believe it, and it's going to happen in Jesus' name. I said it's going to happen in Jesus' name. All right? We're getting ready to go. Um, but now let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Those of you who have not shared this time, I want you to do it. Those who have not pressed that thumbs up button, I need you to do it. I need you to do it. I see my administrator on here, Mrs. Carlos Mitchell. Yeah, miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. Glory to God. Miracle signs and wonders. Yeah. So you all, uh, those new home members that are on here, you all comply and stand with your pastor this week at 6 a.m. for prayer. 6 a.m. I want you on your knees somewhere talking to God. And believe in God for what is getting ready to happen. This is going to be the greatest season of breakthrough. This is going to be the greatest season of breakthrough that we've ever experienced. We're getting ready to see the hand of God move in a very, very special way. In Jesus' name. Everybody press that thumbs up button for me right now. Everybody press that share button. And everybody, listen, particularly those on Facebook, I don't know what the deal is with Facebook. Facebook likes to stop sending notifications. Make sure that your notifications are on in the mornings for our prayer, right? Make sure that your notifications are on in the morning for our prayer. Yesterday was absolutely phenomenal. And man, people were there from everywhere. Uh, we had people from literally in and outside of the the country in our services yesterday. Uh, it was phenomenal, and the grace that God showed us was just ab just abnormal grace, just abnormal grace, right? And what does that mean when you say abnormal? It's just the kind of grace you don't see all the time, and everybody is not privy to. That's the kind of grace I'm believing God is going bestow upon our lives as a result of this this week of just consecration. And while you're praying in the morning, this is what you're going to discover. Some of the spirits that have been trying to break you, God's going to break them. Some of those spirits that have been trying to break you, God is going to break those spirits. He's going to break the hold of that spirit off of your life. And uh, God's going to catapult your life to a whole nother level. I sincerely believe it, all right? Uh, let's get ready to go, but let's go out with a song today. Let's go out with a song today. Um, let's see. What am I going to play for y'all today? Let's, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to... I was looking for a feature I did on another album, but uh, I will uh, I'll play that for you at another time. Let's let's go with let's go with with uh, let's go with in the midst of it all. Everybody share. Everybody share. Lord, I bow down before you. Everybody share. I was lost in despair, but nobody knew. Cause I smiled through it all. <laughs> and I constantly prayed to you. I needed a kind word. Smile or a hug I needed to know 
that somebody loved me Cause I felt so all alone But lo and behold In the midst of it all In the midst of it all You encouraged my soul Yeah, you did So I won't Your word did. Your word encouraged me. I'll just keep holding on. So I stayed, Lord, in your presence. Cause I believe. Terry Lee, that's me singing. All the music you hear me play is my music. I don't. Pl- I love other people's music, but I play mine because it keeps me from them cutting my my channel off, right? All of the restrictions and all that stuff. So I only play 
uh, my music. Now, listen, those of you today who want to be a blessing to our church, I want you to do it. Uh, all of the giving information is on your screen. Uh, you can be a blessing through Cash App. Our church is Cash App, dollar sign NHM 1030. Uh, you can be blessing through PayPal on our church's website, www.newhomeministries.org. Thirdly, you can do it through Givelify, the Givelify app. Put in New Home for Gospel Ministries. You see a little picture of me and a bigger picture of our church. And then finally, you can do it through text to give. Text NHFWCBR to 54244. All right. You can be a blessing to our church uh, through giving. And then uh, if you want to mail your seed in, you can do it by mailing it to New Home Ministry, 1605 Robert C. Blake's Senior Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130. That's New Home Ministry, 1605 Robert C. Blake's Senior Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130. All right. So uh, thank you all so very, very much for uh, your love and for your kindness. Thank you for uh, your gifts. Let me thank those who have been a blessing through Super Chat on YouTube and those who have been a blessing through Stars on Facebook. Thank you so very much. And then let me thank those who have been a blessing through uh, Cash App today. Let's see here. Let me really quickly... Let me really quickly. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lady D, thank you so much. Andrea R. Bennett, thank you so much. Uh, Velva uh, Fogan Richard, thank you so much. Latoya Bradley, thank you so much. Uh, Calanthea Lindsay, thank you so much. I think I'm on the wrong day here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Some of those are from yesterday. Let's see. Um, that's yesterday. Let one one second, y'all. Yeah, one second. I'm trying to I'm trying to work this thing out, and I'm getting ready to let you all go. Let's see. Let's see. I want to make sure that I am. Thanking the right folk on the right day. Uh, let's just go with this. Rochelle Price, thank you so much. Earl and Conway, thank you so much. Monique Thompson, thank you so much. Linda Speech, thank you so much. Alicia Johnson, thank you so much. Markeisha McNeil, thank you so much. Or McNeil, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate all of you, and I love you. And I want you all to have just an amazing, absolutely amazing and phenomenal day. Uh, and you know what I got to say to you, right? Go get it because God says it is absolutely positively yours, my friend. Have an amazing, amazing day. I'll, I'll talk to y'all later. God bless. Never could have made it had you not sheltered me.
me from the rain. I never could have made, made it had you not eased my pain. Yeah. <laughs> 